the academy is a bureaucracy. It's a it's an organization of committees. So we changed the board makeup. We changed the committee structure. We uh, mandated that our executive committees, our members, go out and double the number of women in five years, double the number of people of color in five years. A lot of people know the Academy for the Oscars. Would you talk a little bit about what your day-to-day -day is like the rest of the year? So the Academy, we have about 330 employees and over four buildings. And so there's a broad spectrum of work that we do um, in addition to the Oscars. It is a, such a robust institution that has ongoing business 365 days a year, a lot around the Oscars. That's a half of the year at least or more. But we have n vast education programs. We have a library that has 13 million photographs, 80,000 original scripts. This library preserves our film culture. We have a film archive with 200,000 film titles, but also we do film preservation. We, you know, they're splicing and cutting and making new film prints to save for our future generations. So you've got education, you've got preservation, right. and then you have the Oscars. What, what percent of your brain is spent at any time thinking about the next year's Oscars? The Oscars is the, I say, you know, the sun around which we all revolve. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we're not under any illusion that that is the, one of the greatest, I mean, we're very proud that that is one of the greatest brands, you know, in, in the world. When I came, it wasn't at a time of crisis, you know, there wasn't a perceived crisis, but there was a sense of we need to evolve. Mm -hmm. The film industry is changing so fast and the world is changing so fast, you know, and, and what are young people watching? Are they all engaged in the same movies that uh, our members, you know, are watching and making? What are the opportunities that we could take in this world to be, you know, have be even better leaders? And so we began that process, we began strategic planning, which I'm sure you did too when you first came here. You sure. know, here's your goals, here's the plan. And they were over uh, it's, uh, many areas of our past, our present, our future. And early on, just as an example, we talked about diversity and that the academy at that time was about 78% male and 92% white. And so the board at that time recognized that doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like we're representing the spectrum of filmmaking today. And so we began making um, plans for education, making plans for identifying members that we had, had overlooked in the past. And that was an ongoing effort. And did that happen before the Oscar that, So White controversy? Oh, that happened as soon as I came. So that, that was, was part of the mandate yeah. when I came. Then when in 2015 that Hashtag That's what I wanted up. to say. So, yeah. like, first of all, you're kind of doing business as usual. Right. You're doing your planning. You're doing your you have your committee work. You know, you're saying this committee. We could go a little faster here. Let's talk about. Are we sure we have all the great editors? You know, uh, around the world, or, or you know, you can have a a more not a leisurely conversation, but not with a sense of urgency that that conversation took on when the uh, first Academy Awards was uh, announced three years ago with all white actors, you know, in, in a time when there were several really good popular uh, films made by filmmakers of color. Did alarm bells go off for you when you saw the stage was going to be full of all white faces? Oh, 100%. 100%. But it was too late at that point to do anything about it? Yes, it got under my skin, but I also thought, this is good for us as an institution. We've really, in, you know, rested on our laurels too much. and. Things don't change unless you do things differently, right? Mm -hmm. You do the same things the same way, you get the same results. So we, I did feel there was a chance for us to be more, uh, as, you know, more aggressive in our outreach, and that was a spur toward that. Yes, under my skin, but also, okay, we've got our own house to clean here. You right. know, we've got more work to do. Do you feel good about where things are now? If you remember, the first year was just the first. Well, that was that was part A of the controversy. Mm -hmm. Then we had a repeat the second year, and so that's when it really crescendoed. But you needed that event to kind of spur us into action more. So that I felt was a, re a great response, and I felt we could have taken the path of saying we don't make the films. You know, 
that's Hollywood's problem. Right. We can't help what our members nominate. They're looking at the films, and this is what they come up with. Yeah. What can I say? You, you know, the studio should be making, should be hiring more filmmakers of color. People should be casting more films with filmmakers with uh, people of color. But we didn't do that. That's what I was really proud of the organization. We said, wait a minute, we can make changes within our own governance structure, within our own committee structure. You know, the Academy is a bureaucracy. It's, a, it's an organization of committees. So we changed the board makeup. We changed the committee structure. We uh, mandated that our executive committees, our members, go out and double the number of women in five years, double the number of people of color in five years. Are those the actual in, goals that you set? Well, we absolutely set those goals. And we've almost met both of them in, in two years. So there was a real aggressive outreach. So I'm proud of that. I think you're, you're you know, that was your original question. I was, yes, I'm, I'm proud of what we've done. How do you think about a generation that doesn't necessarily look just at film, that they're just as happy watching YouTube videos or streaming shows or multi-episode shows that are even longer than films? Does it make sense anymore to have this designation of film versus other forms of entertainment? Well, we think so. A movie is that creation where all of the artists involved are all working at the top of their game. Um, and I don't think there's anything else like it. Will people continue going to the theaters? Well, so far they are. Mm -hmm. You know, so far. Um, box office is high and people are seeing these films. Will studios continue making the quality films and opening them wide around the country and around the world? That is how the business is changing and that is a question on everyone's mind. How you see a movie may change, but what a movie is, is very special. We've seen and read a lot about the impact that Netflix and Amazon and other streaming services have had on Hollywood. Have you had to make any changes or have you decided to make any changes yeah. based on these new players? You know, the film industry has never been static. I agree with the streaming services who are funding also beautiful films. Mm -hmm. You know, one of our nominees last year, Manchester by the Sea, was funded by a streaming service. How that's impacting the business, we will, I think we will know over time. Partly it's been uh, great to have new people funding great films, you know, that's, it's, it's tough. It's tough to make a great film and it's tough to get it out in, you know, into the, a very uh, competitive marketplace and get the audience to care about that film. And so to have more people trying to do that, that's good for, that's good for business, I think. The most recent Oscars, there was a, a controversy over the uh, best film award, the last award of the night. I don't know if there's controversy, oh, there was just a screw up. Yes, <laughs> yes. things got messed up yes. and it, everyone makes mistakes. Yours happen to play out on the world stage. Would you walk me through what happened the next day? What did you, what was it like in your office? And following that, what kind of changes did you put into place? Well, it wasn't the next day, it started the minute you know, this happened. Everyone had a different point of view about it. So even finding out what actually happened that night, you know, how finally, the yes, you realize the accountant gave the wrong envelope, wasn't paying attention, gave the wrong envelope to Warren Beatty. Um, that took hours. You'd be surprised how, how long it took to get, you know, to get to the bottom of what You really grabbed happened. people, you pulled them into a room, and yes. started trying to recount yes. what happened? Yes. Yes, we all went in the basement of the Dolby Theater, <laughs> and we all were, it was like, a, you know, an interrogation all right. where everyone was like, what the heck? How could this possibly have happened? So it took a long time to, to kind of retrace what happened, and then once we did, certainly the CEO of PwC of PricewaterhouseCoopers was fantastic. He just moved into our offices, stayed there till we found out what was wrong, till we, you know, worked everything through, and we thought, well, PwC has done this job flawlessly for 82 years. No one has ever questioned the integrity of the voting of the Academy Awards, nor was there any question about this year. And so we felt that replacing those accountants who seemed a little, you know, were dis distracted that night and froze, you know, part of it was the mistake and part of it was the freezing after the mistake. Right. Um, and we have new accountants, new, they're called balloting partners. And I don't think people realize those are the only people who know the winners of the Oscars, and they've memorized them. So it has to be two in case somebody 
you know, gets hit by a bus on the way to the Oscars. What we did is we added a third partner this for this coming year, that someone who will be in the, what we call the truck. So there'll be three people who will know the answers. There'll be three people who can react. The one in the truck with the, with the director of the show can say, hey, wrong film, cut. I right. mean, not cut, but you know, get the stage hand out there, get this, you right. know, get this uh, corrected. So we'll have three partners and then we'll have very large letters on our envelopes, you know? And um, I, I don't think this mistake will ever, ever be made again. You've got 300 plus people that who work for you. As a leader, what do you do after a problem like this happens? The answer for everything from marital problems to staff issues to uh, crisis at the Oscars is communication, right? <laughs> it's just all about communication. How often, how much, how, how clearly, how transparently, how truthfully, that's what we tried to do.